It was launched at Mac 2014, the Tornos Swiss ST26 sliding head lathe. We've come here today to Tornos's head office in Colville to take a more detailed look at this machine tool. So David, what makes the ST26 different? Um, the ST26 is a development on from our uh, Gamma machine, a Gamma 20 machine. Um, with the ST26 we have two independent platens that work at the guide bush or at the counter spindle. Um, so it enables us to be able to do um, simultaneous roughing and finishing of turning operations and also uh, simultaneous milling cross threading operations. Simultaneous, so you could have a component in the main spindle and you could use two tools Let's say you had a bigger bar diameter and you wanted to reduce material quickly, you could use this machine for that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, we can we can bring in two tools to work at the guide bush simultaneously for roughing finishing, and as I say, for uh, simultaneous milling cross drilling. And the spindles, tell me about those. You've got two spindles on this machine? Yep, the, the two spindles are identical. They're integrated motor spindles um, with 11 kilowatt power. Um, they're a um, a very rapid acceleration deceleration on the spindles. 0 to 10,000 is about 0.9 of a second, so very quick. Um, as I say, very powerful, very strong spindles. And the bar capacity? Uh, bar capacity is an inch, 25.4. So it fits nicely in between the 20 and the 32 mil. Normally sliding head lays, you've got a 20 mil and a 32, but this sits right in between those. Exactly. What, what we've again tried to do with the ST26 is to look at the, the, the normal break of the machines um, and bring a machine to the market that enables us to do 20 or 22 millimetre uh, bar diameter without any bar prep. Okay, and um, we've also, what about guide bushes? Do you need to have a guide bush on this machine? No, again, with, uh, with the ST26, we've uh, introduced the, uh, the bushless running option as well, or feature as well. So on all of the machines, it's a standard function that you can remove the guide bush and run without guide bush for those smaller parts, shorter parts. And for the benefit of our viewers, what would that give them as an engineer? Um, it gives you savings on tooling, obviously. You're not buying guy bushes um, that you would have to buy for a conventional um, sliding headstock setup. But equally, if you're producing from some exotic materials, expensive materials, it will also reduce your bar waste, so you're minimising the costs um, to, uh, to the parts as well. And is there any compromise with not having a guy bush? Any effect on accuracy? No, there's no, there's no um, issues with the, the accuracy. Um, the, the restriction you have is the same that you would apply to a, a standard fixed edge stock machine, which is a bar diameter to length ratio. So we normally say about two and a half times um, bar diameter for your maximum part length. So what about the access to the machine and the footprint of the machine? Um, well, the footprint of the machine is quite a compact uh, unit and would sit into a conventional sliding headstock space. Um, as far as access into the tooling area, we have access from both sides and we have the control that will pivot round to both sides as well so we can have access to a control uh, for setting main and counter operations. So an engineer could, could literally set this machine from either side? Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's the way it's been designed, yeah. That's a, that's a, a really neat feature. I've not seen that on any other machine tool. Um, we've done it before in the past on some of our, our uh, other products, but it's not something that's a common feature on the sliding headstock range, yeah. So if you were to summarise the ST26 and where it sits in the market, what sort of engineer or what would you be machining or manufacturing to get a benefit from this type of machine and technology? Um, this is really aimed at the sort of medium to complex uh, components. So moving up from, as I say, from our previous model, the Gamma, um, it pitches quite nicely in between that kind of product um, and uh, an Evo Deco machine, which is a, a more complex um, product. So this machine, how many tools has it got and what about driven tools? Um, well, the, the machine has the um, capability of up to 36 tool positions. Um, we've got 17 of those that can be driven um, across the two platens for main working and counter operations working. Um, and that comprises of uh, standard conventional drilling, milling attachments, thread whirling, polygon turning, that type of thing. And Coolants, you've got a high pressure coolant on this machine? Yeah, a standard the machine comes with 20 bar high pressure with um, five programmable outlets, um, including a coolant wash through the counter spindle. We hear in the marketplace a lot about the differences between using coolants and neat cutting oils. What's your opinion on that? Neat cutting oils is um, traditionally is what is used on sliding headstock products um, across the, 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 the range of machines. Um, equally, we can now start to use more uh, water-based coolants, emulsions, soluble uh, cutting fluids as well. So it's, um, 
it's a product that's adaptable to the customer's needs. And with a production machine, you're producing lots of swarf. Mm -hmm. What about removal of swarf, getting the swarf out of the machine? Uh, you know, how, how does this model uh, sit with that? Well, again, we, we've tried to incorporate um, a good swarf clearance area into the base of the machine like we do on all of our machines. So that if the customer doesn't want a swarf conveyor facility, then they have a big area inside the machine to store the swarf. Um, but equally, you can have a swarf conveyor installed uh, for automatic removal of the, uh, the swarf. Okay, so we've got a machine that sits between 20 mil bar capacity and 32 mil bar capacity. We've spoke about the benefits and the features of having the simultaneous machining, the high powered spindles. Mm -hmm. Does this come at a price? You know, where does it sit in terms of money? Um, well, if you look at the machine and its capabilities, um, we're really sort of about half the price of a conventional machine from other suppliers uh, for the same capability. So it's a, a good value machine. Great. David, thanks for your time. Thank you.